Good morning. morning. It's so different to be sitting up here this morning in this seat. I've sat up here in the seat so many Sundays being facilitator or doing different things, or like they said, sitting over here at the music desk, doing music, and then, you know, sitting down in the fellowship hall with folks in the chairs down there doing board meetings. So this is my very first time to be sitting in this chair, actually giving a talk. So it's very different. It's actually a little bit intimidating because you prepare and you get ready for these things. And I've had this talk prepared for many, many weeks and I've practiced it. And the last couple of weeks, we've had some challenges at the house where I haven't been able to spend as much time going over it as much as I want. So I'm going to refer a lot to my notes. I don't want you to feel like I'm just sitting here reading straight from them, but I probably will need to look down at my notes a little bit. But starting off what Nancy said, today I'm gonna to talk about gratitude because it truly is a gift. I think that a lot of us are used to saying the word thank you, or I appreciate that. That was very kind, that was very nice. I know growing up, the one thing that my mother taught me was, if somebody does something nice to for you, say thank you and be grateful. And so that was truly a gift. But the one thing that I'm not sure she took it far enough that I wanna expand upon today is, we always think of gratitude when we get a gift or when something does, someone does something nice for us. But gratitude itself is really a gift in and by itself because being able to be a grateful person is such a beautiful gift. And I think that a lot of us, including myself, we can do a lot better with that. We need to live in a place of gratitude at all moments. And I think that here in the United States and especially here in the Western world, we don't always do as good of a job as we've seen in other countries and other people, especially the indigenous people around the world, how they're so grateful for the smallest and tiniest things that are going on in their life every single day. And that's the way they lead their life every day. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about because when we look at different people and how they do that, it's not surprising that we have so much going on in our lives every single day. We're all busy, we've got agendas, we've got a chore list, we've got different things to do. And we, it's just hard sometimes to sit down and be grateful for the tiny little things. And sometimes you have to stop and wonder, am I grateful for the air that I breathe? Am I grateful that I had a warm house this morning? Am I grateful that my car started and the battery wasn't dead? But you know, when you stop to think about it and there's other people in the world who their health has been challenged for very different reasons, they have taken that to a whole new level of being gracious and being grateful. Because when you do have a health challenge, I think that a lot of people realize they can live their life a different way because it's not always the easiest when they have the air to breathe. I mean, you think about a person that has bad asthma or a person who has had heart challenges or someone with lupus, whatever their situation may be, they aren't always the ones who are the easiest to see the things that we just take for granted every single day. And it reminds me of a story of a man going in a grocery store and he was with this three or four year old little boy and he's got his boy in the cart. He, he had been at work all day. He's pushing his boy around in the cart and the kid is just, he's tired, the dad's tired. And the kid is grabbing stuff and throwing it out of the cart on the floor. And he says, all right, Jackson, be calm. It's gonna be okay. They get a little bit further down in the grocery store and the kid is still just throwing a tantrum tantrum. And he's like, Jackson, it's all gonna be okay. Just calm down, Jackson. And they get up to the front of the checkout line and there's candy and stuff and the kid's grabbing at everything. And he says, Jackson, just be calm. We're going to be home soon. And this older lady who had seen him in the store had been following him. She comes up and she puts her arm on his shoulder and she says, I just have to tell you, she said, you have been so kind to little Jackson and the way you've handled him here in the store. And with his tired eyes, he looked down and he goes, lady, you don't understand. I'm Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Can you 
So yeah, there are times that, that we've all been in those situations that um, it's hard because children, they, when they're clean and they're acting right and they're behaving, they give us a whole new perspective on the world, but they get tired too. And I think that a lot of times we don't always appreciate children for the bright eyed perspective that they can give us. Sometimes through a child's innocent eyes, they can give us a perspective on things that we're not used to actually seeing. And they get tired too. But do we always take that moment in our day to just kind of slow down and say, thank you for a normal day. Thank you for the gift of having children in my life. And it doesn't have to be a biological child. It can be someone you're babysitting for. It can be your niece. It can be your nephew. It can be a neighbor's child or whatever. And you know, a lot of times it's hard. And when kids are throwing tantra tantrums and doing different things, you don't always think about being grateful. You probably are thinking, why didn't his parents practice Planned Parenthood? This child is a handful, you know, why, why are they acting up so much? But kids are just like us, they get tired, but we just need to show a lot more gratitude because I think that for the children in this world, some of them, they've got tough days. They're trying to live up to all the different standards that we're putting them through. And especially now children in school have got a lot of different pressures, whether it's peer pressure or bullying or anything else. So if there's ever a child in your life, just remember showing gratitude for them and the perspective that they give to us. It, it really is, it's, it's a true blessing because um, they don't always have it as easy as we think that they do. Um, they look to us for a lot of responsibilities. And, you know, we all, we've got our jobs, whether we're retired and we're taking care of the house or we're still actively working. We don't always think about how grateful we can be just for our job. That's a place that brings us a great amount of comfort because that's where we spend almost our entire day. We are there showing our creativity. We're there with our peers and the realistic part of it is that's what pays the mortgage. That's what pays the bills. And it's not always easy when you go home sometimes at night when it's been a difficult day in the office or you've had challenging customers who are chattering on the phone and complaining about this or complaining about that or the computer system goes down and you don't always think about, gosh, I'm so grateful to have a job. I'm so looking forward to going in tomorrow because it's not always easy to get into that space, but we have to remember that's another part of our life that we need to be grateful for, because I think we take a lot of that for granted, especially we're seeing now during the pandemic, there are so many people who they're jobless. They don't have a career anymore. They've lost their business, they've lost whatever. So whatever you have in your life right now that is sustaining income for you, that's another place to really be grateful and realize that you are truly blessed because that's something I think we, again, can really take for granted and um, not always understand. And, you know, I like to tell these different stories. And one of the other one I was gonna talk about today is, and we've been kind of in this situation of trying to be a center where we offer a place for people to come and worship. And there was a church in an older part of town and it was filled with a lot of conservative people, their conservative beliefs. They talked straight from the Bible. They talked about Jesus all the time. And it was filled with most of their parishioners being in their seventies or older. And the minister and the board got together and they decided we've got to do something. If we don't change what's going on now, we're not going to be able to sustain and the church may end up closing. What are we going to do? So they did what a lot of churches have done or try to do. They'll put ads in the college newspapers. They'll put ads in the local paper. They put signs out in front of their church buildings saying, all are welcome here. We want all of you to come and join us for Sunday worship. And so they did that and nothing happened. Well, two or three weeks later, it was an average Sunday, 11 o'clock service. Everybody's there in their best suit and their Sunday best. And the preacher was getting ready to talk and give his sermon. And right then they saw the back door of the church open and this young kid comes walking in. 
He had on tennis shoes. He had on blue jeans, a Google t-shirt. He had bright green hair. He had earrings in both ears. He had an earring in his nose and on his bottom lip. Well, everyone did whatever they could do to not look at him. He looked when he came in and was trying to find a seat and there was not a seat to be found. So he walked up the center of the two pews in the main aisle and walked up to where the minister was getting ready to give his sermon. And he just casually sat down on the floor and waited for the minister to start talking. And so at that point, you could have heard a pin drop because everybody's looking at this new kid with his bright green hair and all of his earrings. And again, you could have heard a pin drop and pretty soon you hear this sound from the back of the church that was nothing but tap, 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 tap. People turned around and they looked and it was their oldest deacon who had been a deacon of the church for over 50 years. And he comes walking up the center aisle dressed in his suit, walking slowly with his cane. He walked straight up the center aisle to where the young kid was sitting. He did his best. He put his cane down, sat right down beside the kid. And they sat together. The minister started, gave his sermon. They sat there and listened to it together. Sermon ended, church was over, and people went on their way. Well, as soon as that happened, not that many people went up and greeted the young kid. And the minister and the board members came up to him and surrounded him and said, what were you thinking? What were you doing? Why did you go up and sit beside this kid who is obviously not one of us? Did you see his hair? And the old deacon looked and he said, you know, the only thing I wanted to do was to make him feel welcome like each one of you felt welcome when you first started coming this is going to be the new face of our church. We don't know what the future holds for us. And we may have a house full of kids with green hair, but we've got to change and we've got to be expected that things like that could happen. So that's why I did it. I sat down to make him feel comfortable. We've done our work, we've put it out there. We have said all are welcome. And it changed that church. And literally their church size started to double Younger people started coming in two by fours and tens and they, their Sunday services changed. And it's now a very, very successful church. And it just goes to prove that, you know, if you're going to make the effort to say, we welcome you, we want you here, we want you part of our group, you have to also be willing to take that extra step and say, thank you, we're glad you're here. We're all different. Each one of us are different as I sit here and look out, but that's what makes us a church family. I mean, to me, you guys, you're my people. This is where I come to worship. This is where I've learned to develop my spirituality. And I think that, you know, every person here, we offer a gift to each and every person. We all have a different walk that we've come through in life. We've all come through a different way of getting to where we are right now in our spirituality. And that's a gift that truly is that we can give each and every one of us, because I think if we remember that old adage or that saying that says, we are all spiritual beings here having a human experience. And that's what it lies down to. I mean, all of us, we've got God inside of us, and it's the way that we can show that expression of God. But again, we sometimes we just get too busy with life. And that's one of the things I wanted to kind of reaffirm today is that it's easy when someone does something nice for us, they show up unexpectedly, or they do something as a pretend bachelor party for you before you get married, right before a board meeting, whatever it is, you know, things like that are always greatly appreciated. And I think that we're always thankful in those moments. But again, we've got to take that gratitude to a whole different level and be thankful all the time for the small things, like I said earlier, whether it's waking up to a warm house or it's that you're husband, your partner, your cat, your dog, whoever it is in the morning that is the first face that you see. I mean, a lot of us, I mean, 
How many of us this morning looked at our other significant person or dog or animal, whoever it is in our life, and said, you know what, thank you. You are a gift. Because of you, you make my world a better place. We don't always do that. We always have a chance to do that. And as we know in life, we may not be given that gift tomorrow or the next day. So I just want to get in that situation of trying to be grateful all the time for the tiny little things that can change not only our lives as a person, but we can change the lives of other. And we've all had different family situations where it's been difficult. I was talking to Sue right before service that family situations are not unique, but family does not have to be just our biological family. We have family that we choose to bring into our life. And I've heard nothing from Sue than her sister, Claudia from California. And I met Claudia today for the first time. And I said, oh, you're Sue's sister. And, you know, how many brothers do you guys have and blah, blah, blah. And at that point I learned that, you know, Claudia is an adopted sister to Sue. And I've got people like that in my life as well. Sometimes our biological family, they're the ones that we were given in this lifetime but they're not always the ones that we have to choose. And that's what's truly a gift as well, because I know for me, a lot of people that have been on my spiritual journey and part of my life have probably, when I say family, I would say that most of my family are people that I've chosen. Because for me at this point, I've got my sister and that's all that's left. She's my biological family, but my extended family, the people who I choose to be around, the people I choose that I want to have in my home, the people that I want to go and do something with, spend a holiday with, those are the people that I have chosen to be in my life as my adopted family. And that's why I think that, you know, we say this often to each other. And that's one of the things I love so much about this place is, again, you guys not only are you my people, you're also my family because it's a gift to be able to come here every Sunday and know that I'm going to see the same faces, the same attitude. I'm not going to be judged for who I am. I'm not going to be looked down upon. But at the same time, we, when we have these situations, we still, we have to set boundaries with people. And that's part of being grateful for the gift of friendship and the gift of family is that knowing that we've all come on our spiritual journey a different way and at different paths to our truth, that it's important when we look back at the relationships we've had and the experiences that have brought us to where we are today. You know, certainly I can look back and you know, I'm still, I have a lot of anger at my ex-wife and my ex-wife has a tremendous amount of anger at me and we can't be in the same room together. We haven't seen each other in 12 years, but we still couldn't be in the same room together. The only ones who are suffering are my two daughters and five grandkids. Those are the ones who are suffering. And I look back, you know, everybody had a dysfunctional family to a different degree. I had an alcoholic uncle who moved into our house. I didn't want him there. I dealt with his physical and his emotional abuse most of my childhood. But now in my spiritual journey and getting to a place of gratitude, I have to shift this place where I am of blame. Why did she do this to me? Why did he cause me this harm? I have to look at each one of those relationships because they've not been good, but they brought me to where I am today. And it's actually, when you stop to think about it, it's a gift because we now know those are the type of people we don't want in our life. Those are the behaviors we don't want to put up with anymore. And that's the part of setting boundaries. We're all adults. We're all human. We all are fallible. We're all subject to having faults of our own. 
But at the same time, it's just as simple to be kind as it is to be mean or hateful or disrespectful. And back to my point of our family situations, our experiences in our past, we have to let it go. And I, I will raise my hand. I'm the biggest culprit. I still to this day have anger for those people. And I've got to let it go. I've got to find a place to bless them, say thank you, love and light, be on your way. We don't have to be in the same room together. I wish you well, but know that that was a gift that I was given. And I am, I couldn't say it at the time, but now when I look at my heart and look at where I am today, that was, all of those situations were truly a gift. And I'm very grateful for them because it's like we hear, we're not always going to appreciate the good times unless there's the bad times because sometimes the bad times we have to go through and we have to look at them and say, gosh, that was a gift. What, what a true blessing that I was able to get through that. And I think that when we're going through those type situations, we don't always see the end in sight and we don't know how to get out of that situation at the time. But now that we look back at it, because when you think about it, when you're going through it at that moment, you think, I can't figure this out. I can't get through today. I just, I can't get through it. I can't deal with this. And then the next day you think, okay, it's not, it's not as bad. Then the following week, it's a little less important. Two months from then, it's even less important. And now, 40 years later, doesn't matter. I got through it. I maneuvered through it. And I can, only thing I can do to continue on my spiritual journey is to say, thank you. That was a blessing. It was a gift. It was a gift I wasn't really prepared to receive at that time, but you changed my life and you changed my life in a way to get me to a place where I am today, because now I'm surrounded by people that I choose to be around. And those are the people who truly love me and they want to be around me for who I am. They accept me, all my warts, all my faults, you know, all my nuances, whatever. And I don't have to put up with those bad behaviors anymore. But at the same time, as difficult as that is, it's almost like going through the 12 steps. Part of the 12 steps, you've got to learn to forgive. And doing that forgiveness, it is, it's truly a gift because again, I think that we've all kind of fallen into that place that it almost becomes like white noise in the background. We just go through our days and we've learned that we kind of give our power away by not being a grateful person because when things are happening, like our car starts, we have good air to breathe. We're living in a gorgeous place in the country. We don't have a lot of crime up here. We take all those things for granted. And we only think, oh, I'm going to be so grateful because, you know, Nancy's going to do something really nice for my birthday or, you know, Tim's going to be really nice and remember me at Christmas. But if we don't live in a moment of gratitude every single day for the little things, we get to that place of what we call complacency. And we get to become people who expect too much and we just take things for granted. And that's just not the best place to be. And again, I fall right there in that same category. I do it all the time myself where I don't always remember to be grateful that yes, having 11 dogs, it's a challenge and they don't always get along. But at the end of the day, when I walk in that front door, knowing no matter what kind of mood I'm in, no matter how angry I am, no matter what kind of day I've had, those little faces are so glad to see me. They don't pass judgment and they are a gift. They're truly a blessing in my life. And people ask Craig and all the time, how do you do it? Well, we've rescued dogs for the past 15 years that we've been in a relationship together. And it's something that brings us a gift because having each one of these innocent animals who 
people have given up for different reasons and don't care about them anymore. Every animal that's in our house is a rescue. And they've come to us from various situations. Charlie, who you guys have met recently, poor guy, he is so codependent. He literally like will chew the door frame if I'm not at home. But he's gotten to a place where he now knows he's safe. I'm not gonna leave him. I'm not gonna abandon him, not going to give him away. He's there to stay. And that's why luckily today, I'm able to be here and not holding Charlie's leash in my left hand <laughs> and calming Charlie down kind of like little Jackson in the buggy of it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's, we're going to get home, Charlie um, type situation. But those are the type of gifts that, you know, we can do not just for ourselves, but we can do for other people that again, it's the gift of gratitude of being able to say, thank you. And sometimes that word, thank you, means a lot. And I know one of the things that I've taught with some of you before I know I've talked with Tim is Craig's mom is 93 and she lives with us full time. And again, that's not easy. It's not easy. Every single day she forgets what day of the week it is. She tells the same story a hundred times a day. But the gift of having her there when I realize that could be me when I'm 93. And the fact that she doesn't intrude in our life, she doesn't interfere in our life. Yes, we have to take care of her and we have to be there for her as her provider and make sure she's safe and her health care is taken care of and she's fed and all those things. But, you know, just hearing some of her stories, even I can tell you every one of them by heart, forwards, backwards, again, you know, the other night she was telling us how interesting it was to be on the Titanic. And when Craig rode the boat out and the water was so cold, you know, the only thing you can do is, yes, the water, that was really cold that night, Carol, it was really cold, you know, but you have to think to yourself again, just to know that a person like that, they've lived their life, they've lived their journey. And I just hope that when I'm 93, someone's gonna be there to take care of me. And that, you know, again, it's a gift that we're giving to her. And she's grateful. She's not the most grateful person on the planet. I sometimes feel as if she takes things for granted, but that's okay, that's who she is. She's not going to change, but she has taught me a lot of lessons in life. And she's taught me a lot of things about patience. She's taught me a lot of things about relationships. She herself has lived through quite a bit. Her first husband died very tragically. He was a helicopter pilot, left her with two small boys who were under the age of 12. She had never worked in her life. And, you know, she had to go out and find a job back during the depression and be able to you know, figure out how am I gonna raise these kids and what am I going to do? And just having the patience and the where for all to sit down and listen and you absorb that. Those, everyone I think has a lesson that they can give us. And I wasn't grateful in the beginning because I saw it as a challenge. I saw my mother-in-law's living with me 24 hours a day. She lives the floor right above me she can hear most everything that's going on. You know, this is just not going to work. This is going to be a challenge, but I've had to look at it. It's a gift. And she's teaching me a lot about life. And I have to be grateful for that because she has shown up in my life for whatever reason. And that's the other thing we need to remember that people show up in our life for a reason. The universe is... I always remember the one thing that the minister at the Spiritual Living Center told in his talk the very first Sunday I was ever at a Spiritual Living Center. He closed his talk with, don't ever forget, the universe is working all the time and the universe is on time all the time. The universe never makes a mistake. And I think that we as humans in that 
adage of saying that we're spiritual beings have a human experience, we sometimes let our human part of it get in the way because we want to direct the universe to do it this way. This should be happening today for this reason. And I don't want this to be going on in my life right now for this reason. And sometimes it's frustrating. But then at those times when we simply sit back and let the universe work, it always is working in our behalf. It's never done us wrong. I've never found a time where the universe has done me wrong. I, I can look back and say, gosh, don't understand why that happened and why I had to live in that place for that period of time. But it taught me a lesson. And I think that's the part that we need to get back to is, again, be grateful for every single thing in your life and not just the blessings, not just for the gifts, not just for the special friends that show up on occasion, but just simply be grateful for those who are in your life. You know, I remember Nancy saying, Larry showed up in her life and what a gift, you know, see how happy they are together. And I think I remember Nancy saying one time that, she knew that Jean directed or had a hand in bringing Larry to you. I mean, what a testament, you know? Because none of us can probably think, what would I do without my loved one? What would I do without my husband? What would I do without my wife? What would I do without having so-and-so? But we just have to trust and know the universe is working for each and every one of us at every single moment. And we have to be grateful when those times happen. And sometimes they're going to be a challenge. Sometimes they're going to be difficult. But at the end of the day, we all get through it. And we all can sit here and say, we've survived another day. And I'm grateful for the lessons that that day taught me. It may not necessarily have been the easiest lesson, but I got through it. And what I'd like to do is at this point is put us through a very short meditation that I put together. And one other thing before I forget, looking here at my notes, there's a book out there called I Had It All the Time by Alan Cohen. And he was a New Thought author. And he makes a statement in the opening of his book where he says, what desire seeks, gratitude already claims. So once again, what desire seeks, gratitude already claims. And that's pretty powerful because we all have in us what we need already. We are the universe. We are God. We have in us whatever we need. So let's take a moment, just kind of get comfortable and think consciously and deliberately about all the things that we're grateful for. We're grateful for the presence of spirit in and through us. We're grateful for our family. Whether they're still here on this plane or they've transitioned on, we're grateful for our friends. We're grateful for our adopted family. We're especially grateful for our health during this time of pandemic with COVID-19. We're grateful for the opportunity to give of our talents, our creativity and our work. We're grateful for our home. We're grateful for our pets. We're grateful for the abundance that we have in consciousness. We're grateful for this incredibly beautiful world and all the different ways in which we can experience it. We're grateful for being alive. And as we take the time to look at all the small things in our life, every single one of them, be grateful for them and to recognize how our life would be so different if they weren't there. We feel our focus changing no longer do we look at the things in this world that distract us. The drama, the resentment, those people that bothered us or those people that did us wrong. We release every one of those things as we focus on being grateful as a feeling. And as we get that feeling in us and we feel it expanding, filling our heart and filling our mind, it begins to fill our life. And when we wake up in the morning with a grateful attitude, or before we go to sleep, feeling gratitude for the day we just have gone through. Or when we stop in the middle of the day and simply look around us, take a deep breath and feel our body, recognize the beauty around us, 
the ability to explore, the ability to spend time with people that we love, to learn and to express. And with all these things, gratitude becomes for us the greatest power in our life. So we can immerse ourselves in it. And that feeling allows us to be more creative, to attract more into our life. And in giving, we receive. And in receiving, we give back to those who have given to us what we have received. So I invite you, let's take these last few moments, the silence of your heart, to feel the gratitude for the full week that's ahead of us. And before we know what the week is going to be like, let's decide now to be completely grateful for the time we're going to have with family, friends, and loved ones. For whatever happens between now and next week, let's focus completely on the feelings of gratitude so we can maintain this sense of gratitude throughout this coming week. And so it is. And last, I'd like to close with a prayer of gratitude. With gratitude for this awareness, for our beautiful center and the immense gratitude for everyone who is here this morning, with gratitude for our heart beating, our breath going in and out, our blood flowing, with gratitude for everything in our experience right now, as we leave this place today, we take that sense of gratitude with us. We share it with everyone we meet so we can give thanks for all that we have received, for all that we are yet to receive. This is our truth. Knowing this with a completely shifted consciousness, we accept this truth as our own. We release it into the universe, knowing it returns to us, multiplied abundantly. And so it is. So it is.